Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Okay, I'm continuing. Today, uh, I'm Dr. Ananda Ghosh. Today, we are going to talk about x rays in the pediatric population. First, we will talk about an introduction to chest x ray. These are the following points that we must ensure before interpreting a chest x ray. First is patient identification. The next is the view, whether it's the anterior posterior, posterior anterior, or the lateral view. Then, whether the film is an inspiration or expiration view. However, I must say that in case of very young babies and infants, we cannot determine we cannot determine the inspiration or expiration first. Then we have to ascertain whether there is appropriate exposure and whether the film is rotated or not. The following are the points based on which a chest texture should be interpreted. The airway, bones and soft tissue, cardia, diaphragm, presence of any effusion, the lung fields, presence of gastric bubble, hyla, and any other impression. This slide shows a normal chest x-ray. I have already marked the different structures over here. There is nothing to explain in this slide. Now, there is a very frequent confusion regarding the view, whether they are PA view or is it the AP view. Now, this slide is to clear the confusion. In a posterior anterior view, the scapula is seen in the periphery of the thorax, whereas in the AP view, it is seen over the lung fields. The clavicles project over the lung fields in PA view and above the apex of lung fields in AP view. In PA view, the ribs, the posterior ribs are distinct, and in AP view, the anterior ribs are distinct and they are more horizontal. Now, how to ascertain appropriate exposure? The vertebral spine should be visible up to the T4 level and not very clearly visible to the cardiac shadow. Bronchovascular markings should be visible close to the periphery. The underexposed film will look white and the vertebral shadow is not at all seen clearly. In overexposed films, the plate looks black and the lung markings are not seen to the periphery. Here I have shown two types of X-rays. The left-hand side is the one with underexposed. You can see the whitish background. There is no clear-cut demarcation of the thoracic vertebrae. And in the right-hand side, you can see a grossly overexposed film. The lung fields appear very black with no bronchovascular markings. Next is rotation. Rotation can be assessed by observing the clavicular heads and the distance from the spinous process. Ideal, we should aim for a central position in chest x -ray. And how do we know whether it's a central position? Number one, the medial end of clavicles should be equidistant from the midline. And the anterior ends of ribs should be equidistant from same-sided pedicle. Here you can see I have shown two extremes. The left-hand side shows a perfect central position, where the right-hand side is definitely rotated. Now we move on to certain chest x-rays in various disease processes. The first one is pneumonia. There are two types of pneumonia, lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. Pneumonia is characterized by the presence of consolidation. Consolidation is a dense, 
homogeneous opacity with diffuse margins. Location will obviously depend on the area involved. There is no mediastinal shifting and the costophonic angles are clear. Here you have, uh, I have shown two types of excess. The left hand side shows the right upper lower consolidation. You can see it with diffuse margin homogeneous opacity, presence of air bronchogram, and the left one, and the right one is, of, is one of bronchopneumonia. The next is lung collapse. Lung collapse also appears as a homogeneous dense opacity, but this one has sharp margin. The location depends on the blocked bronchus. Area of the collapsed lung is much smaller than the normal radiological area of the lung portion involved. The apex always points towards the hilum, and uh, lung collapse may often be associated with mediastinal shift to the same site. Here is an X-ray showing right upper lower collapse with obvious mediastinal shifting. Here you can see that. Next, we move on to lung abscess. A lung abscess is a cavity present within the lung tube. It is thick-walled, have smooth inner margin, may contain air fluid level, and it is often associated with surrounding infective changes in the lung parenchyma. Next, we move on to miliary tuberculosis. Miliary tuberculosis, the extra finding is of diffuse, evenly distributed, small, dense, and well-defined opacities resembling millet hence the name miliary. Next is a very common extra finding in children, hyperinflation. A, hyper, a hyperlucent lung field is uh, presence of less amount of bronchovascular markings per unit area. The lung fields appear more black. More than six anterior ribs and 10 posterior ribs are visible in the midclavicular line. The hemidiaphragms are flattened. There is widening of intercostal spaces, wide open costophrenic angles. Examples of lung hyperinflation, as you all know, are asthma, bronchiolitis, and emphysis. Here is an extra showing obstructive airway disease. You can see the hyperinflated lung fields. There is widening of intercostal spaces, black lung fields, less number of bronchovascular markings, flattened dome of diaphragm. It's very classical. Next, we move on to pleural effusion. Pleural effusion appears as a homogeneous opacity which obliterates the costophrenic angle. In mild to moderate effusion, you can see the meniscus sign. And large effusions are often associated with mediastinal shifting to the opposite side. Here you can see X-ray of a massive pleural effusion with obvious mediastinal shift. Next, we move on to pneumothorax. A pneumothorax presents with a hyperlucent area without any lung margin. We can see the collapsed lung as a globular opaque mass and sharp margin at the height. And often there is mediastinal shift. You can see here, um, uh, this is a small kid parented with pneumothorax. There is a loose pneumothorax causing mediastinal shift at the opposite side. This is a lateral view. Now we move on to pneumatocytes. Pneumatocytes are intrapulmonary air filled cystic spaces. They have a smooth margin, they are thin-walled and regular, they have little fluid, and may rupture to cause pneumatocytes. Pneumatocytes are always a result of a lung inflammation. Here is another example of a pneumatocyte on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, with the pneumothorax on the left-hand side and the intercostal drainage tube in position. Next, we move on to hydro-pneumothorax. Hydro-pneumothorax has two features, a homogeneous opacity at the lower part of pneumothorax with obliterated costophrenic angle and a translucency at the, top or at the upper portion with absent lung margin. The collapsed lung margin may be seen at the high level. The mediastinum is often shifted to the opposite side. The air fluid level as shown in this diagram is demonstrated only in the erect portion, not in supine position. Next, I have shown two pictures of congenital lung lesions. They are not very common. However, you may find them. The left-hand one is a congenital lung cyst shown in a three-day-old baby. And the right-hand one is an example of congenital lower emphysema. Next, we move on to mediastinum, the normal and abnormal curve. 
Normally, the following structures we should look for while studying the extra. The lymph nodes. These lymph nodes appear as round, homogeneous, well-circumscribed opacities at the hilum or paratracheal position. Thymus, a homogeneous, smooth opacity on the superior mediastinum, which is prominent in infancy, and it presents as the classical cell sign. Hmm. Mass, a larger well or ill-defined hmm. opaque hmm. shadows hmm. with occasional pressure effect. Hmm. Last time the yeah. Here is an extra showing the normal media stem. Here is the aortic arch. You can see I have already I have already shown the uh, I have already labeled them. This is a normal media stem. There is no enlarged lymph nodes or there is no thymus is not seen in this case, and there is no mass of this. This is a this is a chest extra PA view in a two-month-old baby. Here you can definitely see the thymus, which presents as a homogeneous homogeneous, homogeneous opacity with a clear cut margin, like the sail of a boat, hence the called sail sign. Next is an X-ray of mediastinal widening. This mediastinal widening is due to hilar lymphadenopathy involving the superior mediastinum. Next, we move on to assessment of the cardio. The cardio involves the heart shadow, the heart shadow, and then the vessels. Then the, there is the aortic arch, then the aortic knob, then aortic pulmonary window, then the pulmonary trunk, SVC, and IVC. Important in assessing the cardia is determining the cardiac size and to comment whether there is cardiomegaly or not. To comment on cardiomegaly, we have to calculate the cardiothoracic ratio. This is calculated as shown in the picture. We draw a straight line along the middle and take the maximum breadth of the cardiac shadow on either side of midline, then add them up and divide it by the thoracic width. This will give you the cardiothoracic ratio. The normal CT ratio is 0.5. More than 0.5 suggests cardiomegaly. This is an X-ray showing cardiomegaly due to heart failure. You can see the associated congestive cardiogenic pulmonary edema as the classic batch wing pattern involved in the both lungs. Cardiomegaly due to heart failure, it may be due to right ventricular or left ventricular failure. Left ventricular hypertrophic presence has increased in the, in the cardiomegaly with the apex turned down and out, and the right ventricular up, the apex is turned up. Next is cardiomegaly due to pericardial effusion. There is obvious increased cardiothoracic angle, obliteration of the normal borders, more acute cardiophrenic angles, pulmonary oligemia, and in case of massive pericardial effusion, you will get water bottle heart. Now next I will show some pictures of congenital cardiac patients. Here is one of callostructurology. You can see the classic Good shepherd heart or core and support as it is known. This is due to the right ventricular hypertrophy causing the shifting of the apex to the up. Next is the typical egg on side appearance in case of transposition of great arteries. This is a x ray of total anomalous pulmonary venous connection, but I must say this typical figure of weight or snowman sign does not present in the newborn period. This is a case of chronic TAPVC uncorrected that will lead to this structure. This is an X-ray showing dextrocardia, but this is an isolated dextrocardia without any uh, situs inverses because you can see the liver shadow is present on the right. Let's we move on to some abnormalities in the diaphragm. The right, uh, left hand one is the event pressure of diaphragm. It occurs when there is uh, when there is weakness in the diaphragm leaflet, so you can see there is bulging of the gut contents, abdominal contents into the thoracic cavity, but you can see a definite, the, thyroid, the dome of the diaphragm is definitely present. To the right is the case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia, where there is absence or defect in the diaphragm leaflet, leading to herniation of gut loops into the thoracic cage. Next, we show two x-rays of tracheoesophageal tissue. It is diagnosed by passing 
a radio opaque orogastric tube through the mouth and then witnessing the coiling of the tube in the two extras you can definitely see the coiling of the tube and the inability to pass it beyond a certain point next is the presence of foreign body in trachea and esophagus in the pa or ap view you can definitely see the foreign body lodged in the neck or in the upper part of the chest but you definitely need a lateral view to ascertain whether it is in the trachea or the esophagus and in this case as you can see it is in the esophagus next we go for some acquired tracheal abnormality the left hand sign is the steeple sign which is very characteristically found in acute laryngotracheal bronchitis or flu and the right hand sign is due to the inflamed epiglottis in acute epiglottis presenting the thumb print sign now we move on to some abdominal x abdominal x ray is done in erect posture and antero posterior view usually helps in detection of pneumoperitoneum gut perforation and other congenital abnormalities this is a x ray showing a pneumoperitoneum you can see the gas below the right dome of diaphragm now i must say many often people confuse between gas bubble and the stomach that is present below the left dome of diaphragm but you have to be very careful to see whether there is any free gas present below the right dome of diaphragm comment on this pneumoperitoneum next is the classical double bubble sign in a case of duodenal atresia this is a barium mean x-ray in a case of hashpan disease you can see the endoglomic segment is constricted narrow followed by and which is preceded by the enlarged metacarpal this is a extra historical and uh, historical importance in case of imperforate anus previously we used to do a invertebral by placing a coil in the anal opening and this x ray is taken we can see the absence of the air going to the anal opening next is a x ray important x ray of necrotizing enterocolitis which is a very common complication seen in preterm newborns in case of nec as you can see as i have shown the gut looks as swollen there is gut wall edema with often presence of gas bubbles within the gut wall and there is dilatation in ileus next we move on to some important bones the following points are to be emphasized while reading a bone the cortical outline bony matrix generalized and localized changes epiphyses and metaphyses and joint space rickets in active rickets the following we get the extra features metaphysis puffing widening of metaphysis fraying of metaphysial end increased distance between metaphysis and epiphysis double contouring of periosteum we can sometimes get instinct fracture and in extra with healing rickets we get the zone of preparatory calcification this appears as the line of calcification at the epiphysial end of osteoid tissue at its junction with the growth plane and it represents the normal current position of bone formation there is obviously progressive mineralization of osteoid tissue here is an example of active rickets you can see in the tibia see the generalized osteopenia with double contouring of the bones cortex there is metaphyseal widening puffing fraying and so is in the wrist however i must say you may not get all the findings in a single x ray this is an example of healing rickets i have already marked it you can see the two lines of calcification in this case next we move on to scurvy the extra features of scurvy include the following a ground glass appearance of the bony matrix due to loss of the normal bony trabecular pattern the matter metaphysis appears fragmented and is called tremor felt so pencil thin cortex winberger sign the winberger sign is a pencil thin cortex outlining the ground glass epiphysis like a signet ring then we get the white line of frenkel at the metaphysis end zone of rarefaction then we get the pelkin spur this pelkin spur is the projection of the frenkel's line close to the zone of rarefaction epiphyseal separation 
and we may also get subperiosteal hemorrhage with calcification of hematoma. Here you can see the pencil thin cortex, a generalized brown glass matrix, presence of pelvic spur. The Wimberger sign is very clear over here, and the frontal sign. Next, we move on to X-ray of congenital sickles. It has two characteristic features: one, osteochondritis, which involves the metathesis of long bones mainly and gives them a moth-eaten appearance, and another is periosteitis which involves the long bones and results in double contouring of bony corpus. In this x-ray, you can see periosteitis, that is double contouring of the long bones, that is tibia and fibula. In this x-ray of congenital syphilis, the moth eaten appearance of the long bones, that is femur and tibia, is very evident. Next, we move on to mucopolysaccharidosis. The radiological features include typhoscoliosis, central peaking of vertebral bodies, bullet-shaped metacarpals, the plane of distal end of both radius and ulna slanted towards each other, wine glass shaped pelvis, coxa valga, gen valgus. These two extras show some of the features. In the, first one you, <clears throat> in the first one, you can see the flat and rounded vertebral bodies, and the other one, you can see the bullet-shaped metacarpals. The skull X-ray. Skull X-ray is not done usually. It is done in very exceptional cases, like in chronic hemolytic anemia. We get two characteristic features: the widened diploid space and hair-on-end appearance. Both are result of extramedullary hematopoiesis. You can see the two X-rays are given. The left-hand side shows hair-on-end hair appearance, and the right-hand one shows the widened diploid space. Next is in Langerhans cells histiocytosis. Here you can see the definite punched out, clear cut osteolytic lesions involving the flat bones of the skull. You can see both x rays. You have there is a definite punched out lesion with a clear cut margin. These are all. Thank you. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Participants, participants. If you have some question, you can uh, ask me. Hello. Hello. Do you have any questions regarding this uh, slide? Hello, sir. So, just tell me what is the difference between how will you differentiate uh, uh, pneumonia X and a collapse X? Is it clear for, uh, for you? Clear pain, lower pneumonia, and collapse may look same. So, you have to look for that. But uh, in case of collapse, the margins will be very clear. Okay. Collapse uh, will draw the mediastinal structure towards the mission cell. Okay. So, uh, there is a very good x ray for that.
see that it's here. So uh, this collapse has drawn this tracker to, to that side. Okay. So, uh, so at the uh, tracker is shifted towards right. There is a very clear and distinct margin. On the other hand, you can see that this margin is not very clear. Okay. And uh, there is no significant shift. So this is a pneumonia. Right? Okay, collapse. Okay, uh, so like uh, there is a confusion about, uh, may have a confusion about between uh, pneumatic cell and a uh, cavity. Okay. So, first thing that cavity is not very common in children. Okay. Uh, pneumatic cell is very common in children. Pneumatic cell has a very thin margin. So this margin is very thin, okay? And cavity will have a very ragged margin, regular margin and thick margin. Okay. Sometimes you will see that there will be a collection inside cavity. There is abscess cavity in this way. Yes. So this is an abscess cavity. Uh, you can see that uh, margin is so much thick. So, uh, in case of new margin, it's very, very thin margin. And there is a sleep level inside this round cell. So this is an abscess cavity. Dual uh, effusion, you have to always check for angles. Okay. Sometimes you will see this type of X ray with angle, if uh, there may be angle very clear. Okay. So, suppose there is a mediastinal, uh, there is a mass inside in the lung. Okay. It's not very uncommon. Uh, in case of some childhood pregnancy, there uh, you may have uh, large masses inside the chest. Okay. And you may have, uh, you may apparently look like that there is a uh, massive diffusion in, uh, involving whole hemicorrhics. But then you have to look for this angle. In case of mass, the angle will be clear. But in case of diffusion, the angles may not be clear. So, but definitely the first to differentiate between them is by Yes. Okay. Now, uh, this is this is a case. This is a extra uh, and uh, there is a X-ray of congenital lower infection. Okay. So, these X-rays also look similar. Okay. Yes, uh, lungs will be hyperinflated. Uh, with this, uh, there will be big black, black shadows in one side, and uh, the mediastinal structure will be pushed opposite side. So, but if you look very uh, intensely, then you will find that there is some lung marking in this X-ray, but which will be absent in case of Pneumothoracics. Okay. So, if you don't look for that, then you will miss it. This is a pneumothoracics. It's a This X-ray contains some number. Just now, X-ray important is uh, three structures are very important: thymus and lutein. Okay, partially. Uh, thymus is a very well, uh, it's made most of the time. Thymus is a physiological environment of thymus. Okay, uh, this thymus, uh, if there is a thymus in the environment, then there will be concave shadow. Okay, so 
this looks like it. Uh, So, uh, the sales uh, side looks like this. This. So, concavity, but if there is a lymph node enlargement, then lymph node will be like this. Okay, so. Then Hello? Should be Hello, sir. Okay. Cardiac enlargement, maybe of two types. That is right ventricular enlargement and left ventricular enlargement. Hello. Right ventricular enlargement will cause like root like shell. Okay. Uh, effects will not go downward. Okay. But it will go upward, slightly upward. Uh, but in case of left ventricular enlargement, which is far more common, there will be out and downwards in, uh, movement of apex. Okay. Maybe uh, cardiac enlargement may be due to heart enlargement of heart itself, or there may be pericardial effusion. In case of pericardial effusion, this Angle. This is called this is called cardiophrenic angle. So look at this cardiophrenic angle. This is sharp angle. Okay. So this indicates it's a peripheral, this pericardial effusion. And look at this outline. This outline is very clear, but this outline is not that clear. Okay. So this is also feature of pericardial effusion. Then there will be very clear cut outline, this angle will be very sharp, and this shape, uh, shape of the heart is like a leather bottle. Okay, so leather bottle is nothing like that. If you uh, put some water inside a plastic bottle or a plastic bag also, and you put that bag on the table, the bag will take a shape of uh, round, round shape. Okay, so that is called leather bottle. Shape. Colors of metrology, this is uh, classically called forms about the special type of book, but why, why this, uh, this, this, uh, this thing happens? Uh, the apex moves upwards. So this is due to the components of the colors are right ventricular enlargement. So right due to this right ventricular enlargement, this uh, this apex looks upwards, and then there is an empty pulmonary vein. Okay, so why this empty pulmonary vein? Because of this pulmonary stenosis. Okay, so for this two reason, this X-ray occurs. Okay, now uh, transposition of aorta has a different. Uh, uh, this TABC. So TABC. Uh, most of the time, we will get TABC pneumonia. Okay. But this X-ray doesn't look same uh, like this in case of Okay, uh, you will find most of the time X-ray like ARDS. Sorry, ARDS, RDS, respiratory distress syndrome. So lung skin will be hazy, bilateral, down plus opacity. So it is very difficult uh, to differentiate a BTBC X-ray from a RDS. Okay. It, uh, you have to use a clinical judgment. If there is a long standing KPC, then you can see this type of uh, it's But remember that uh, in, uh, in examination, uh, you will, uh, most of the time, this type of extra will, be, will have mediastinal enlargement. So don't miss mediastinal enlargement and just say, tell that it's a KPC. Dextrocardia. Whenever you will get a dextrocardia x ray, just check that marking. First, you have to check for marking. 
then you have to check for liver shadow. Uh, there may be a miss. Uh, you may have. Uh, markings may have been uh, put wrong. Okay? So you have to check for that stomach shadow, liver shadow, and cardiac shadow. Okay? So if these things are in normal size and heart is also in the right size, then it's a dextrocardia. But uh, isolated dextrocardia, this is called isolated dextrocardia, but there may be a complete uh, gap that is called. Uh, this liver will also will be in the uh, left side and there may be a single or multiple speed shadows to the right. Okay. This is a Movement pressure, there is a difference between movement pressure and party. In case of movement pressure, there is a three part party showing the continuum of that part. But in case of party, this margin will not be present. Okay. So, what you are seeing in the chest are the intestinal saddles. Okay. So, intestines are moved from the abdomen to the chest. Tracking is official fistula is another thing uh, where uh, for diagnosis of tracking, when you suspect tracking is official fistula, this type of child will, uh, will choke during feeding and they will have continuous throbbing. Okay? So, in this type of child, we will try to put a Orogastic tube or mesogastic tube. Radio opaque tube uh, should be put in, inside. And this is, it should be stick tube. Okay. So you have to put that tube, and if there is a tracheal feature in the tumor, most of the time, the tube will not pass and will coil in the neck. Okay. So after passing this, you will have to take a radiogram. And we will see this classical picture of coiling of tube. Okay. But uh, in one case, we will pass that is, that is the H type of history. Okay. This is very difficult to diagnose. So, for each type of history, we have to put dye, and you will see that tubing of dye in the tractor. Uh, so, whenever you will get a foreign body x ray, please take a lateral view. Lateral view will confirm the position of the foreign body. It is inside the airway or it is in the stomach or uh, subject. Okay. So, you can see that the airway is anterior and the foreign body is in the posterior. Okay. So, graph, you can see piece of figures, the events collapsed. Okay. You are seeing this black shadow is track, shadow of right here, and piece of figures is there, but this collapsed. And one body is inside this piece of figures. So, you are seeing this post tracheal shadow of one body. These are very typical x ray of uh, x ray. This is, a this is just pointed apex. Okay. It's very important. They have a very classical picture. Child will be very much agitated. They will have a typical sitting position. Okay. So, you uh, have suspect and have, uh, have to get an x ray. Uh, so, fragility is rare, to, uh, rare uh, nowadays because of increased cover of vaccination. Most common organism causing so fragility and cytokine glottitis is uh, and that is uh, nowadays covered under national immunization program. Okay? So, uh, this is a gas under diaphragm x ray. Uh, this is a huge gas under diaphragm. You may not see that huge gas under diaphragm all the time. You may have a chink of gas, uh, gas shadow under diaphragm. So, right, if, it, if it is under right diaphragm, it's very easy to di uh, diagnose, but in the case of left diaphragm, you know, but the 
stomach gas origins are the bottom at that in the confusion. This is double, double level, this is heart spot. So, the very clear x ray. So, the x ray are also removed. You know, Thank you. You have anything to know? You have any confusion? You can ask. Yes. Or are you? Hello. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Okay, I am leaving. Thank you for everything this class. Sir, there are doubts in the chat. Thank you.